Okay, class, so we're just going to finish up chapter four. And most of this is just some terms and a little bit of understanding of what's going on in the world today. Um, basically, when you do your problems, you're given the different cost pools and you're given the allocation base and you're given the cost drivers. But where exactly do those cost pools come from? Well, some companies use what's called the cost hierarchy to establish those different cost pools. So for example, unit level activities, they occur with every unit. That would be, for example, inspections or packaging. So your cost allocation base could be inspecting or packaging. For the batch activities, every batch. So a machine setup might represent a good uh, allocation base for a batch level uh, activity. Product would be something like, oh, R&D design development for that particular product. That would be a allocation base. And faculty level activities incur no matter how many units, batches, or products are produced in the plant. So you could be looking at just, oh, some general things like insurance or property taxes. Okay, so that's where, if you're wondering where do those cost pools come from and the allocation basis, they come from that basic cost hierarchy that we just went through. Now, ABC costing is actually part of a bigger activity-based management system. And ABM, as it's called, uses ABC to increase its profits and, of course, increase its customer satisfaction. So it's going to be used here, useful for example, for pricing and product mix decisions. That's one thing it's used for. Cutting costs, which is one of the major things that they look for, especially in manufacturing. And routine planning and control decisions that we know that management do uh, all the time. Okay, so looking then at some of these, pricing and product mix decision, changing the prices. Okay, so ABC gives you an opportunity to really understand better how manufacturing overhead, or in the case of a service business, how indirect costs are allocated. So it helps you then to change prices after you identify if something is under or over cost for the product. Capitalize on extra profitability by increasing advertising. In other words, if you find something that has more profitability than you had expected, you might wanna just increase the advertising. And when we get into later chapters and we talk about decision-making, this, this concept of increasing advertising is one of the ways that we consider when we're doing decision-making. Often the overcosting high volume products and undercosting of low volume products happen. Uh, it's just a natural tendency. And of course, shifting product mix, <clears throat> which means that, you know, if in the past you were making 100 pairs of Levi's and 20 tents, uh, you may shift from making 10 tents and 500 pairs of Levi's. So it tells you a lot about things like product mix, uh, changing prices, et cetera, when you have this ABC and ABM management system. Cost cutting is always a key factor. You're looking to pinpoint opportunities. And this brings up two extremely important concepts. Uh, one of them is what's called value added activities. And value added activities are where the activities uh, will increase the value of the product and will add value to the customer satisfaction or the product itself. And so that means the customer would be willing to pay more. So that's where you want to spend the majority of your new costs. Non-value activities are the activities that you actually want to try and get rid of as much as possible. Uh, you have something like uh, value engineering where they try to eliminate all waste 
And a lot of times they go into using robotics or um, supply chain management just simply to uh, you get rid of the hourly wages of somebody by using robots. Now, that doesn't sound very good, but it is one way that management is going to make changes. Uh, one of the primary ways of looking at non-value activities are in inventory, where you're paying to warehouse inventory or move inventory around or just store inventory. So you want to reduce or remove those kinds of processes from the value chain. And of course, routine planning and control decisions, that's where you get into things like creating budgets and comparing actual costs to those budgets. And we get into an entire chapter that talks about variances. And that's just simply where you're comparing what did you budget compared to what is the actual cost. Now, like everything in managerial accounting, you have a cost benefit test. That means do the benefits of the ABC activity-based costing outweigh the cost? In other words, if we're going to implement a new system and it's going to cost us $100,000, but we're only going to be saving $50,000, the costs simply do not outweigh the benefits. Okay? So, you will find the benefits are higher in competitive markets, okay, where you need to have accurate product cost information. It's essential. And you can also pinpoint cost savings that can be passed on to the customer. Okay. Um, a little bit more about the cost benefit. Uh, the benefits also are higher when the risk of cost distortion is high. In other words, as we saw when we were taking a look at the Eclipse and the treadmills, uh, there was a high risk of cost distortion. And so that's when your benefits will be higher. Uh, the costs are lower, okay? So you can have higher benefits in this situation, but the costs are lower when the company has an accounting and information system uh, enterprise to develop the system. In other words, the IT has things like barcoding, optical scanning. So the costs, in other words, are not going to be very much. They will be lower because you already have in place something that is recording all of the costs through either barcoding or optical scanning. Now, signs that the old system may be distorting the cost, the managers simply don't understand the cost of the profits, okay? And this happens quite a bit. Um, when I was working at San Diego State as a TA, we would take our, our students out to the different small businesses, and we would take a look at their their costing systems. And a lot of times we just noticed that the managers didn't understand their cost and their profits. And so that hurt them when they were bidding for jobs. Um, and simply the employees did not believe the cost numbers. In other words, the people who were actually doing the work disagreed. Also competitors with similar product uh, priced their products lower, but still earned a profit because Again, you had cost distortions, okay? The other thing that was a sign that the old system may be outdated, okay, was company has diversified its products. In other words, you need to update for the fact you have a lot of different products. Also, the company has re-engineered its production process, so it's changed it around. So you need to be careful that you're not having cost distortions because you simply have old, outdated systems. Now, this brings in something called lean thinking, and this has been around for a while. It's, it's a philosophy where, and a strategy where you're focused on creating value by eliminating waste. Okay, so it's something that is going to emphasize 
for the customer a short response time. And one of the ways that you can eliminate these wastes, here are eight wastes that are mentioned right here. Uh, basically, you can see that buying, storing, and moving inventories, like I mentioned before, that's, that's definitely a waste. So that's in the inventory, movement, transportation, waiting, those kinds of things. And then, of course, producing poor quality products and services, that's something like defects, overproduction, all of those things, excess processing, they're, they're all what are called an acronym for downtime. Okay, and I'll let you go ahead and study a little closer on these things. They're in the textbook. And every once in a while, you may be asked a multiple choice question where you have to just refer to the book or, you know, your notes. Characteristics of lean operation. Again, you're going to eliminate the waste of time and money. And just in time is a huge factor here. And what is just in time? It means that you're ordering the goods just in time for production and for delivery. So a lot of times companies, especially international companies, they won't even start the production process until you actually have the orders. And you have something called a pull system where the orders will pull the, the production through the manufacturing process. So you order the raw materials just in time for the production and you complete the goods just in time for delivery. Okay, other things like value stream mapping where you can identify and visualize the production process or you have self-contained cells. That's simply where you try and have a layout of a plant where uh, Employees can do multiple activities because everything is contained in a certain area. Uh, 5S workplace organization, sort, set, and order, shine, standardize. All of these are production processes in lean operations. Uh, here's some more. As I mentioned, we use what's called the pull system where you pull it through after you everything starts with the order. So you don't even start production until you get an order. I remember I, I once I ordered my son a pair of Kobe Bryant tennis shoes many years ago, and it took quite a while to get them because until they had a, a certain number ordered, uh, they didn't start the production. And it was made probably in India and it was assembled in another country. And, and so it took time, but that's the way that you saved on the cost of, of the tennis shoes. Uh, using shorter batches, reduced setup times, all of these are part of lean operations. And again, I'll let you kind of go through the book and look at those on your own. There's only a few drawbacks to lean production. One of them is the strike of suppliers. Um, I don't know if you're in the year of 2020, but you know, there was a total shutdown of work during 2020. You had the uh, the uh, COVID-19 virus and a lot of different suppliers were shut down. So things that we normally got, we had to wait a long time for. For example, masks and protective gear for the healthcare workers. So if you have delivery delays, that something can be a problem, weather issues, strikes, or shortages of par parts or, or even recalls where there's bad products that are being made and they're part of the, the production chain. So that can cause real issues. But for the most part, companies use lean production. Okay, now one other concept before we leave chapter four is total quality management. Okay, and, and so you can say lean production systems only produce what is currently needed. Consequently, it's essential that production consists of high quality products. Okay, you don't want to be having a lot of waste. So you want to make sure that when you do a product that it's a high quality product. So management's philosophy is to focus on not having a lot of errors or even returns 
for warranties and things like that. So the, the customers expect superior products and services. Each business function in the value chain eliminates its activities to improve the quality and eliminate defects, okay? So TQM, as it's called, is really another important factor that, that comes into play. Now, TQM has something called the cost of quality. There's a homework video on this where there's four different costs that are involved. Prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure, and external failure. So on one of your homework problems and maybe one of your midterm problems, you have to separate those. Um, I would use this particular uh, table for that problem. As you can see, it, it really does separate it fairly well. Okay, so, and these are kind of like positive costs because prevention costs can be positive and that's training personnel, uh, using better materials, preventative maintenance. You can see this would be a positive cost. Appraisal cost, that might also be kind of a positive cost where mainly these are inspections. So if you see the word inspection, then for the most part, or testing, that would be an appraisal cost. And I would say that's a positive cost. And then the two negative costs would be the internal failure cost. And these are the costs that happen before you actually have finished production and sold the material. So things like downtime or reworking or rejected units, those would be all internal failures. External failures, this is after you've sold the product. So things like warranty costs or profits lost from lost customers, they get tired of bad products, so you lose them. Liability claims or recalls, those would all be negative and external. External simply means the product has already been sold and walked out the door. Okay, class, so that's it for chapter four, and I'll see you again chapter five.